Today I was called a liar and scum by a total stranger who felt justified in doing so because so far too that I've seen headlines at free thought blogs have used Thunderfoot's real name in their headlines. I question that. Why provoke him? Um, and I also said it's the height of cis privilege to wave a red flag in front of his face and say, Neener, Neener, we know your real name. We dare you to out Natalie Reed and whomever else. My comment is to sing. Uh, somebody else who runs a free thought blog said, called me fucking stupid. Runs a free thought blog. And I can't read because Thunderfoot's real name is public knowledge and has been for years. Near as I can tell, it's been public knowledge for about a year. So why am I making a big deal out of it and who do I think I am and why am I lying? I didn't lie. I didn't. People are assuming that I said that PZ Myers and Freethought Blogs outed Thunderfoot. I never said any such thing. I said they use Thunderfoot's real name when Natalie has said she's not going to participate in atheist bickering anymore because she doesn't want her real name revealed and Thunderfoot has access to it. And there's no reason to trust him. He says he doesn't dock drop. However, he's so unethical he breaks into confidential email lists and passes the information on to third parties with people's real names, including Natalie's. So why would you want to intentionally provoke him? That's all I'm asking. I don't see trans women doing this. I don't see genderqueer people doing this. I see cisgendered heterosexual males primarily doing this, except for that one guy who may or may not be gay, um, if he's a guy, which I think he is. So I get this private message from somebody I don't even know telling me I'm scum and telling me I'm a liar. Well, I copied and pasted my correspondence to the other free thought blogger. I said, I don't owe you this, but I'm going to give it to you. Mostly it was a science experiment to see what would happen if the person was presented with the truth, if the person would apologize for being abusive and accusatory and for jumping to conclusions. Instead, the person wrote back and said that I was dishonest, that I ought to apologize for what I said, and that I am scum. person doesn't even know me. person is blocked now, but I'm scum because I dared question whether it's safe for genderqueer people if free thought blogs intentionally provoke Thunderfoot to dock drop by using Do Thunderfoot's real name. See, this is why Natalie Reed is leaving all this petty bullshit. What Natalie Reed said last night in her blog is exactly what I've been feeling and intuiting but, but unable to articulate every word. Why am I spending time in this community? Community. That calls me, calls people like me cunts. 
last night, the Global Secular Humanism Community used a graphic by a comedian questioning our right to use the word homophobia. Somebody in comments saying, well, arachnophobia is fear of spiders, so it's not the same thing. Well, I'll tell you what. If people are pathologically afraid of spiders, are they willing to even consider giving spiders equal rights? No. Are they willing to kill them on sight? Yes. Don't tell us what our language is. There will be another video about that. I took screen captures of the entire conversation, and I plan to post a video later today about that. Don't tell us. Ask us. So for the record, Thunderfoot, of course, is behaving like an asshole. And frankly, he's behaving like a rapist. And his little fanboys are all over that. But, you know, what I got today might as well have been a Thunderfoot fanboy. Abusive, self-righteous, dismissive, arrogant, ignorant, mostly abusive. Hunted me down, tracked me down through the internet so that he could be abusive to me. Why would I want to participate in a dynamic like that? This has nothing to do with rationality. This has nothing to do with critical thinking. Give a person the benefit of the doubt. Ask them what they mean before you start accusing them of stuff. I can't afford to go in there and do all that. I don't have the time or the luxury of of engaging in troll wars? Well, why didn't you go back in when people pointed it out to you? Well, first of all, I can't reply to comments. Somebody, that, that blogger that accused me, I couldn't reply to his comment. I had to go to his blog and post a reply to another blog post of his to let him know what I thought and what I meant. I'm not going to spend all day in free thought blogs looking at comments and answering them. I stated my concerns. That's all I needed to do. How other people interpret them is up to their own literacy and competency levels, not mine. My last point is that I believe that this trolling and flaming is an addiction. I felt the neurochemical differences in me last night. I'm very sensitive to neurochemical changes in me because of my brain injuries and my post-traumatic stress disorder. I'm the canary in the coal mine. I feel things before... Uh, I, I'm more sensitive to things than a lot of people around me are. And I notice when they're damaging. What I noticed in that little post about that homophobia, we, we shouldn't use the word homophobia, what I noticed in that was my heart rate accelerated, my respiration came faster, I was um, hyper alert, I was in pain, I wanted to alleviate the stress, so I posted something to the, uh, to the thread. I was ignored, which is just almost as bad as being verbally attacked. Because I was silenced. As a queer person, nobody was hearing. They were all telling queer people how they should think, act, and feel, and speak. And nobody was listening to a queer person. So again, we went in, because that made the feeling escalate. It was, it, I was even in more pain. So I went in again and tried again. Nothing. And I found myself barely able to restrain becoming verbally abusive myself. In fact, I think I did. Mildly so, but I don't, I think I crossed the line. I don't remember. So I am acutely aware that this flaming and trolling stuff is addictive. Something happens to provoke a negative feeling. You go in to try to uh, ameliorate the feeling. Um, in the process of trying to ameliorate the feeling, I think it releases dopamine and you feel better temporarily. And then either somebody comes back ignoring or uh, attacking you. And that increases the, un the discomfort and the craving for relief. It's addictive behavior. We need to state our truth. Absolutely. Don't be silenced. We need to state our truth. And then after that, let it go. Why do we need to state our truth? So we can find each other. And so we won't be silenced. And so that we can form community with each other. So we can find support. But 
when the trolling starts, if they start to become abusive, nothing. Say nothing. Give it no energy. They don't want to learn. They want to stay in their addiction. And they want you in it too. Misery loves company. Don't buy into it. Don't waste time on it. And don't feed it in your own body and your own neurochemistry. We're trying to find each other. We're trying to form community. This is not about justifying ourselves to cisgendered people, white people, heterosexual people. It's not about trying to justify ourselves to people of privilege. We are trying to find each other. State your truth and then let it go. I post the thing about uh, global secular humanisms picture of that comic and his dismissal of the word homophobia. I'll post it later. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. This isn't about them. This is why Natalie Reed is backing out. And she's right. There are more important things in the world than this nitpicking and pettiness. Go read Natalie Reed's latest uh, blog post. I'll link it below. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Try to be gentle with each other. Try to be respectful. Ask people what they mean. Don't accuse them of things before you know. That's not skeptical. Alright, goodbye.